Richard Oldner here and welcome to the channel. Today we're talking about how to make more power from your small block Chevy. What's the best way to improve the power? What about nitrous? What about a blower? What about a turbo? That's right, we're talking about power adders. In this video, I'm giving my salute to power adders for small block Chevys. We're taking a look at three different small blocks. We've got a 305, that's right, a 350 and a larger 383 stroker. And we've got a bunch of different power routers. We're talking about nitrous. We're talking about a roots blower. We're talking about a centrifugal blower. And we're talking about twin turbos. We're going to start out our shout out to power adders on small block Chevys with nitrous. In fact, it's a nitrous injected 305, so it's got a lot of things going for it. And before you start jumping on the bandwagon saying, ah, those 305s are junk, they actually make fairly good power if you build them correctly. Now, it's not going to make the power that a larger 350 does or anything that has a good four inch bore. So because the reason for that is not so much the displacement of the 305, or really even the bore size, other than the bore size limiting the number of cylinder heads that are available for this combination. So, but we were able to cure that with a trick flow head, but we'll get into all of that. So this test was run for a comparison that I did way back for CarCraft. I was comparing the five liter HO Mustang engine, you know, to, uh, in the eighties and nineties. Um, to the TunePort 305 5 liter available in the Camaro Z28 stuff. So we ran this thing stock, but this was in modified trim. We ran this thing and upgraded it before we put the nitrous on. It was a stock bottom end, just the, the TunePort hydraulic roller motor. So this was a factory hydraulic roller motor. To that, we added a camshaft. Obviously, you want to upgrade the camshaft. This was a Comp XR276HR cam. It was a 502-510 lift split a 224 to 30 degree duration split and 110 degree lobe separation angle allowing this thing to flow we replaced the factory iron heads with a set of trick flow super 23 degree 175 heads ideally suited for this 305 uh, they had 56 cc chambers the one limiting factor is we probably should have upgraded the valve springs that we were getting into valve float past 6200 or so on this thing so it would have been better to not have that on this combination before we ran the nitrous we ran it with a Nettlebrock uh, Victor Jr. single plane intake an RPM air gap probably would be a better choice on this and a 650 carburetor we had an MSD distributor when this and inch and three quarter long tube headers that we always run on the dyno when this thing was run NA before the nitrous, it made best power at like 35 degrees of total timing. So run in that manner, this combination produced 376 horsepower. Peak torque checked in at 347 foot-pounds. Nice broad uh, torque curve here from, you know, nice flat, nice and flat from 4,400 out to 5,400. So a nice thousand RPM spread there. But even then, it, even down low, it's making over 300 foot-pounds. But here's what happened when we added our nitrous. Now we ran both a Zex perimeter plate and a Holly low buck sniper uh, plate system. And they both worked equally well. This one was run with the Zex perimeter plate, easy to install. We adjusted the fuel pressure going to the nitrous or to the fuel supply of the nitrous setup to six pounds. We ran a 46 jet on the nitrous and a 40 jet on the fuel and so equipped. And we also retarded the timing by three or four degrees. And we ran this on pump gas. This motor produced over 500 horsepower, 503 horsepower. Peak torque checked in at 488 foot-pounds. Now, we, you obviously could activate this a lot earlier. And if you got the same horsepower gain down low, you'd have a lot more torque and you'd be able to accelerate. But the cool thing about, and this is what I wanted to show, is on our first power adder, you're taking a 375 horsepower motor and immediately and e very easily and inexpensively turning it into a 500 horsepower motor. And obviously that's going to do nothing but good things to acceleration. Now that we know that the 305 works with nitrous, let's check out a slightly larger 350. Stepping up from the test run on the 305, naturally we would transition to the larger and probably more powerful and likely more prevalent 350. And this one actually was originally, I think, an L31 uh, Vortec headed small block from the wrecking yard out of a truck. For some reason, we took the Vortec heads off and replaced them with a set of aluminum, even CNC ported RHS heads, which was way more cylinder head than we needed for our mild combination. In reality, we could have left the Vortec heads on and probably made this kind of power or close to it 
you would have needed to machine the Vortec head, especially in the spring pad area and the valve guide, to put decent springs in it so that we could run a fairly healthy camshaft. But all of that is fairly easy. So if you're thinking about reproducing this kind of thing, know that you don't even need an expensive aluminum head upgrade. An aluminum head upgrade is not a bad idea so that you can reduce weight and, and, and reduce the potential for detonation and, and likely make a little bit more power. Most aftermarket aluminum heads might be better than the factory Vortec head, but the, vac the factory Vortec head will support a lot of power. But on this combination, we did basically a top end on this thing. We installed uh, the RHS aluminum heads. They were 200 cc ports. Um, they were CNC ported again, more head than we needed. We put a healthy uh, comp extreme energy hydraulic roller in it. It was a 282, an XR282, which offered a 510, 520 lift split, a 230, 236 degree duration split, and a 110 degree lobe separation angle. And yes, the tight LSA works with a turbo, or twin turbos in this case. Um, we also installed a comp aluminum 1.5, uh, you know, aluminum gold roller rockers. We had dyno headers on it. We had a single uh, 950 XP carburetor, more carburetor than we need. Probably the 950 was laying closer than the 750 that we could have used. And it had a Performer RPM air gap. We run with the long tube headers and, and uh, MSD distributor. This small block produced 405 horsepower and 392 foot-pounds of torque. So here's what happened after we installed our power adder or our pair of power adders. Picked up a lot of power. This was actually a twin turbo kit, and we used it as a blow-through with a CSU dedicated blow-through carburetor. We used two 76 millimeter turbos. Again, way more turbo than we needed, but those are the ones that we had laying around from previous Big Bang testing. Two of the CX Racing 76 millimeters. We used the air-to-water intercooler with dyno water running through it. Probably not necessary at this low boost because we were blowing through the carburetor anyway. So we were already getting charge cooling. But again, it doesn't hurt anything in it and it can only help. But run with those two turbos in intercooled form. We ran 8.9 pounds. And we were up near 600 horsepower, 596. Torque was up to 567 foot-pounds. And then we, we turned it up a little bit more to a little over 10 pounds. And the power output jumped up to 641 horsepower. So if you need a quick extra 30 or 40, 50 horsepower, all you got to do is turn the boost up a little bit. In this case, it was less than or a little over a pound of boost. Peak torque checked in at 606 foot-pounds. So 600 foot-pounds in a small block and over 600 horsepower, 640 horsepower is going to make anything really, really fast and really, really fun. So now let's take a look at our final three small block power adders. It is a 383. Naturally, we saved the biggest and most powerful for last. This one was a 383 stroker. So it was a motor that came from the guys at Blueprint Engine. It was one of their power adder 383 strokers. So it was 9 to 1. It had their aluminum as cast heads on it. It featured a camshaft, you know, fairly mild. It was a 536, 555 lift, a 224, 236 degree duration split at 113 degree lobe separation angle. We topped it for the NA combination and also for the Pro Charger with an Edelbrock Victor Jr. intake and a 750 carburetor. It had our dyno headers and an MSD distributor. This thing ran best with 35 degrees of timing. And again, this is more oriented toward street performance than it is, but you see we make some fairly good power. So run with the in naturally aspirated trim. Our 383 produced 453 horsepower and 456 foot-pounds of torque. So now it's time to add some a power adder since this motor was designed to accept a power adder. I mean, heck, it says power adder right in the name, right? So we that's exactly what we did. We first added a 671 supercharger, a YN671, with two 750 blower carburetors on it. We ran it first at about 11 pounds, a total of 11 pounds of boost, and run in this manner. The motor produced 642 horsepower, and 589 foot-pounds of torque. And you can see we the first thing that we did was, you know, it's obviously you can turn the boost up, but what we did was ran E85 in it, and it, it really liked the E85 rather than having just uh, pump gas, 91 pump gas in this thing. 
So run with the E85 and another two degrees of timing. This combination jumped up to 700 horsepower and 646 foot-pounds of torque. So obviously the 671 was doing very well. And on a roots blown application, the carburetors provide charge cooling as it, as the fuel goes through the blower, which is good. It also helps lubricate the blower. A lot of the blowers will need that and require that. You can't run those dry actually. But with E85, the cooling is even greater. And as we, we normally see with E85 on any kind of force induction application, uh, we get a pretty good gain in power just from using the E85. And we saw that here. And uh, on a non-intercooled deal, like with this roots blower, very good idea to run E85. But we weren't done yet. We actually ran this motor with nitrous, and we also ran it with a torque storm. But the one I wanted to show you is we also ran this thing with a Pro Charger. And the Pro Charger that we ran had much more power potential than the 671 did. This was an F1A94. And we can go ahead and take a look at what kind of power we got from the Pro Charger. Lots more power up, over 800 horsepower. We were at 815 horsepower. Peak torque was at 687 foot-pounds of torque. Doesn't obviously have quite the response that the big roots blower does, down below 4,400, but it charges hard on the top end. The Pro Charger, we ran a lot more boost with it, with that combination. It was up as high as 15 pounds compared to 11.4 on the 671 but the big roots blowers are not designed really to run lots of uh lots of pressure the pro charger also benefited one from e85 just like the 671 and also from an air to air intercooler which is obviously you know an added benefit but this goes to show you that no matter what you pick if you've got a small block chevy there are lots of power adders for it and you can make lots of power let's get to our conclusion Okay, guys, what do we learn from this little adventure running three different small blocks, our 305, the 350, and the 383 with a variety of different power adders? Now, the one thing that we learned, at the risk of being Captain Obvious, power adders definitely add power and not just a little bit of power. They add a lot of power. Now, sure, on a small block Chevy, you can upgrade the cylinder heads or the camshaft or even the intake manifold, and individually, each one of those things will add a fair bit of power. Combined, they add a pretty good bit of power, but even that, still nothing compared to a good power adder setup. At a simple plate nitro system, 150, 200 horsepower, no problem. A big root 671 blower not only adds a ton of power, but also makes a huge visual statement. Plus, they sound awesome. On our Pro Charger, we pushed the power up with a small block over 800 horsepower, but guess what? We were just scratching the surface. There's another 400 horsepower worth of supercharger there. Same thing with the twin turbos. You can make 1400 horsepower, no problem. But the question is, do you have enough motor or do you have enough nerve? Cause the power adders do. I'm Richard Holder, make sure to like, share, subscribe, ring the bell, do all that stuff. More testing coming up.